If you've ever searched for a mini lathe on the internet, I'm willing to bet that you've probably seen one of these or a version of this lathe, probably for a pretty low price. When I first started looking for a mini lathe about three years ago, the cost for one of these was around about a hundred bucks, give or take. However, they now seem to sell them for about thirty to fifty dollars, depending on the model that you get. Now it's been close to five years since I last used a wood lathe. So I was pretty happy to spend $40 to get back into the hobby. I was never hugely great with a wood lathe, but I remember it being a lot of fun to use. And knowing how the metal lathe exceeded my expectations, I was really rooting for this lathe. So let me take you back a few weeks to when it first arrived. Unlike the other lathes which arrive in wooden boxes, this one was shipped in a simple cardboard box. Inside we have a table so it can be used as a table saw or a disc sounder. We have instructions, well sort of. We have a few tools. And finally we have the lathe and a variable voltage DC power supply. Now I chose this specific mini lathe because it's made from folded sheet metal with a blue powder coating. The theory being at the time that it might be somewhat more rigid than the earlier models which used extruded aluminium as the bed, very similar to the aluminium that you might find in CNC router kits. Furthermore, the aluminium models seem to have acrylic motor housings which often got damaged in shipping, whilst this one here is made from folded sheet metal. The only plastic here is the on off switch. Overall, the lathe seems to be pretty solid for its size, which is actually pretty small. It's only 34cm long by 5cm wide and 8cm tall. It's actually smaller than a full size keyboard. In terms of work size, it can hold a maximum piece which is 150mm long by 60mm in diameter. With that work area, it should be big enough to make small wooden handles and knobs. Unlike the older aluminium lathes, the tool rest is also made from steel and it's fixed into place with a hex bolt, whereas the older lathes used an aluminium tool rest with a Phillips head bolt. And whilst you can lock the rest very tightly in place with the hex head, it will constantly fill with sawdust and you'll be needing to clean it every time you want to move it. And a big problem here is you will be needing to move it a lot, because it just isn't wide enough. At only 45mm wide, you'll find yourself accidentally slipping the tool off the side, and you will constantly need to move it. A good long term solution would be just to make your own using some L shaped steel. Also, be prepared for the powder coating to quickly wear away as you use the tool rest. In terms of the rigidity of the bed, there is only so much we can ask from 1mm sheet steel. It's rigid enough for the work that we need to do, but there is obviously some amount of flex in it. At the end of the bed, we have our tail stock and live center, and unfortunately, the live center can't be swapped out for any other tool, and it also has no forward movement. This means you will need to pre drill your center holes and really push it into position when turning between centers. On the business end of the lathe, we have a B10 Jacobs chuck fitted to the motor. It's a really small Jacobs chuck, so for most of the turning, we will have to use our spur center for holding the work between centers. Rather worryingly though is the shaft running from the motor to the chuck. It's only a few millimeters thick and it just isn't rigid at all. The motor that they use here is a 775 DC motor and the RPM ranges between 3000 and 7000 and you do this by varying the voltage on the power supply. However, it should be noted that this is advertised as a 150 watt motor. However, with the 12 to 24 volt power brick, the maximum power that we can get from it is only 100 watts. So to get the full 160 watts of power, we would need a 36 volt power supply. So let's get started. Before you get turning, the first thing you really want to do is bolt the lathe down to a table or a very heavy piece of wood. Even on a small lathe, it's not exactly safe to have it freely moving whilst you are turning. I mounted my lathe to a heavy slab of acrylic using some bolts I turned up on my metal lathe. Although store bought bolts will suffice. The bolts on my lathe were M4 and I used the included rubber feet to dampen vibrations. So let's get our first project underway, which will be a handle for a lathe tool. 
I cut a 14 cm long by 1.5 cm square piece from an offcut of Tassie oak. On each end I marked the centre of the work. On one end I used a centre drill in a cordless drill to make a 60 degree centre taper for the live centre. You can use a drill press for this but wood turning has a lot of leeway in the tolerances at least compared to metal turning so I found no issues using a cordless drill. On the other end I got the spur centre, lined it up with the centre of the work and I hammered it into the end of the workpiece using a hammer. The part was then placed securely in the lathe. For the first project I stuck to using the included universal tool that came with the lathe kit. The tool seemed to work fine. It did all the operations well and left a half decent finish. But in comparison to a proper lathe tool, this has nothing on them. However, I'm pretty satisfied with the work that it produced. However, in the future, I'm not planning on using it. Once the shape was roughed out, it was then cleaned up with abrasive paper, and to be honest, even at its low speed, 3500 RPM is just too much for sanding. Finally, it was then coated in some mineral oil, and the part was removed, and the sprue cut off. A hole was then drilled in the centre, and an old allen key was glued into the hole. The allen key is made from a carbon steel and should be fine as a wood cutting tool. It was grounded to the shape of a tool with positive rake and it was then heat treated. And you know what, it looks pretty good. I did a bit of testing off camera to get the geometry really honed in and the cut turned out really great. So I went to get the camera so I could make a second handle for another lathe tool that I made, but... Clearly something bad has happened. I will admit here, electronics are not my strong area. But it seems that in the three weeks that I've been using this, I have ruined the motor. It certainly wasn't the power brick, because I tried to get the motor working on several other 12 and 24 volt power supplies, and nothing worked. And the power supply here also worked on things that needed 12 volt power, so we can easily rule this out as being the issue. The fault seems to lie with the motor itself. Listening to it, it's quite clear that a bearing is having some issue, but it's not clear if this is the reason for the problem. It wouldn't surprise me at all if this motor isn't designed to and just can't handle the forces that it is subjected to when it's being used as a lathe spindle. Either way, I'm going to have to replace the motor eventually, but that is a project for another time. So even though the motor failed, it really didn't affect my overall opinion on this lathe, because for all I know, I just got unlucky here. I really was rooting for this lathe to be just a hidden gem on the market, but after using it for several weeks, up until the motor stopped working, I came to this conclusion. For $40, it does a decent job. It is a lathe, as you saw, and it was able to turn up a handle quite easily, and I had a good amount of fun using it. But I really couldn't recommend this outside of it being used as a toy that you use occasionally. 
If you really want to do woodwork, you're going to have to spend a little bit extra to get a slightly bigger one, because the size of this one truly does limit you. You can only make so many handles and knobs before it gets really old. It's not exactly like the metal lathe, where there are infinite hacks to get more space from the area that you provided. The lathe here is just small, even though you can turn parts that are 60mm in diameter, there's only so much that you can make from that small work area. I really wish I could be more positive about this lathe, but unless you really want to throw $40 at this just to see what it's like, I would recommend you just to give this a skip. There are a lot of wood lathes out there that are pretty affordable and not that much more than this lathe, but this one here just isn't great value. I've had a lot of fun with this lathe, but it just really isn't practical. And with that, thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, see you next time.